Hello, this is Neil Vanderstil, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages, available on Amazon. I'm also currently working on my new book, which hopefully will be available next year, called The Glass Banking Pyramid. The Glass Banking Pyramid will be about the global money bubbles and other factors affecting the economy. I decided to look up what the doomsday clock was at and it says it's at three minutes to midnight so if you look back throughout time it's uh, it was previously at five minutes to midnight and if it goes to midnight that means you know doomsday the end of humanity so we're at three minutes to midnight it says uh, back in 95 it was at 14 minutes uh, 14 minutes to midnight and then it said in 1995, oh, let's go back to 91 was a better reading. 1991, 17 minutes to midnight. With the Cold War officially over, the United States and Russia began making deep cuts to their nuclear arsenals. The Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty greatly reduced the number of strategic nuclear weapons. So, okay, I get the idea. Now, if you go back to all the way to 1984, and that's where we're at now, it says three minutes to midnight. U.S.-Soviet relations uh, reached their iciest points in de decades. So this was at a time when the two superpowers uh, stopped talking to each other and basically began producing, I guess, a lot of propaganda about each other and uh, hateful relations. So here we have, uh, uh, we're at three minutes to midnight now in 2015, and uh, this doesn't talk about as much as the uh, ongoing conflicts, but that's what I want to talk about. Uh, it talks about climate climate change, and uh, down here it talks about the United States and Russia have embarked on massive programs to modernize their nuclear triads. Tri triads. Triads. I thought it was triads. Okay, thereby undermine, undermining existing nuclear weapons treaties. The clock ticks now at just three minutes to midnight because international leaders are failing to perform their most important duty, ensuring and pres preserving the health and vitality of human civilization. Here's a chart about ISIS that doesn't really have to do about the clock ticking the midnight and the nuclear war but it sort of does but this is how ISIS uses oil to finance its terror operations so ISIS controls 30,000 barrels a day that Iraq produces and it also controls 50,000 barrels a day that Syria produces as you could see on the chart to the left and then down at the bottom it says 1,000 bo uh, barrels of oil a day each uh, each oil canister represents so this chart was by uh, dailysignal.com and the source is Iran Energy Institute so it takes these uh, 80,000 barrels of oil a day and it sells it for $40 a barrel on the black market compared to $93 a barrel in the free market. So that's an older chart, but apparently they're still doing the same thing. And they've made, at that rate, they make 1.2 million a day from Iraq. And then they've made 2 million a day from Syria making 97 million a month when the uh, price of oil was at $93 a barrel. So that's how they built up ISIS, is through uh, pirating oil. And of course, uh, controlling those territories through terrorism. I was looking up some uh, information on Joel Skousen and uh, this article by him is the analysis of strategic threats in the current decade and uh, he was talking about if you know the elite hide 
the elitist, you know, the wealthy rich, where are they going to hide in a nuclear war or World War Three? And the fact of the matter is they're not going to hide in Japan, New Zealand, Australia, or the Philippines. A lot of people think they'll go to New Zealand or, 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 or Australia. But the fact of the matter is that China will take over those territories, New Zealand, Australia, the Philippines, Japan, etc., in, in a uh, World War III conflict. So the, the first thing China will do is take over those areas. A lot of people think that the elite will be hiding there, but actually he's saying that they'll be hiding in places like in the Ozarks of uh, Colorado Mountains, and that's where the elite have been buying up stuff. Here's another article, and it talks about the, uh, says uh, Joel Skousen's uh, China's long-range long range plan for war. China just doesn't want to conquer the world militarily. It wants to harness the world's economy under its personal control. So you've heard about the New World Order, and, um, you know, there's some people who believe there's a New World Order, and there's some that don't. But a lot of lot believe that a big event is coming and that a new world order will be established. But uh, China also seems to want to establish its own version of a new world order. And uh, that article was uh, published in December 28, 2013. Uh, it says, uh, To be free, Jeff's Freedom Pages. So that uh, sounds like a personal blog, uh, Jeff. Fence, Fensk, I guess is the name. Jeff, F-E-N-S-K-E. -E. Okay, my reader says it's Fenska, and I don't know if that's uh, right, but listen. Fenska. Jeff Fenska. I. It's probably wrong. This thing pronounces things wrong all the time. It's almost laughable. So anyway, he writes, in recent weeks, I've covered some big milestones reached by Ch Chinese military in the development of longer-ranged ICBMs, ballistic missile submarines, and blue water naval assets. In past decades, China has been very secretive about its military advancement, not wanting to alert the West to their use of stolen technology, some from outright spying which the U.S. fabricated under the guise of friendship, and some from technology transfers through Israel, who acts as a surrogate for the U.S. So, hmm, that's interesting. You could read the full article if you go there. But uh, the, uh, the thing is, China has a lot of technology because uh, they've got the same stealth technology that we have. They have the drone technology. Um, they have advanced military technology that the United States spent all this money to discover and develop only to have it leaked into their hands. So we have a dangerous situation there where China is very powerful industrial giant that is now a lot stronger than the United States. You see the United States is a consumer based economy now and it's based off the off of debt and credit. So you know when you have a 70% 70% economy that is based on consumer consumer buying, consumer purchasing, and then you have these purchases being based off of credit and debt. It doesn't set up a very good scenario in the end. But China also has its own problems. For instance, if you put in the term ghost cities into Google for uh, China, you'll find out that uh, China has all these ghost cities in an artificial um, housing boom, real estate boom, that cannot be supported by its people. So here's an article back in uh, 7 20, 2015 by Forbes, and it talks about China's ghost cities. So you have a situation where these uh, Chinese workers work for very low wages, but you have 
China developing these ghost cities where literally no one lives in these cities, but the properties and the buildings are owned by so-called investors that believe that there is a property boom there, but there's no one able to buy these, you know, even apartments. They can't even afford to live in an apartment because the average wage in, uh, from a Chinese worker is very low. You know, they live on a couple dollars a day. So you have a huge situation there with the poverty in China, and yet you have the artificial market going full steam ahead. So this is, this is probably going to cause some civil unrest in the future. And when you have a country as powerful as China that gets unstable, they might be more willing to get into a war with the United States to uh, distract their population. And they're well aware of that. The same thing is going on in the United States with very high poverty levels, um, a phony economy being reported by the United States that is backed by consumers that are buying on credit. And there's no way to ever pay for all the debt in circulation by the United States. And a lot of the debt is actually held by China and other nations. And it's just an enormous mess. And it's not going to um, end on a positive note. It never does. Historically, you have poverty, you have unstable leadership, um, you have developments going on around the world that, in, um, that involve the resources in the Middle East, which is the lifeblood of all, all industrial countries. They'll be fighting over the oil rights in those regions, and you have ISIS taking over um, oil in uh, areas in the Middle East and pirating their oil. Um, the, the Middle East is not a stable area, but yet we rely on their energy. So I will be going into that, those developments and other developments in detail in my next book, The Glass Banking Pyramid, A Global Money Bubble. And um, for now, you could read my book, Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages, which also covers a lot of the turmoil that exist now. I just published Global Economic Collapse earlier this year, and it is current information that is very valid to the current economy and the upcoming crisis. Here's an article by uh, Tyler Durden at uh, ZeroHedge.com, and he shows a picture of the oil tankers getting blown up by uh, probably Russian airplanes and he says the he writes the peculiar thing about the US strikes is that it took the Pentagon um, nearly 14 months to figure out that the most effective way to cripple is the Islamic State oil trade is to bomb and then he puts a lot of periods the oil so it took them that long to figure out you have to destroy the oil it says prior to November the US strategy revolved around bombing the group's oil infrastructure as it turns out, that strategy was minimally, minimally effective at best. And it's not entirely clear that an effort was made to inform the White House, Congress, and or the public about just how little damage the airstrikes were actually inflicting. So that article is about how Turkey exports ISIS oil to the world. The Scientific Evidence by Tyler Durden, a good read. I recommend that you read. Thanks for listening. Oh, please give my video a thumbs up. It helps with the rating system. I need to get more subscribers. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages, and... Keep an eye out for the glass banking pyramid, a global money bubble.